You want to go on a bike ride, but you've not been outside on your bike in ages, perhaps because you've been riding an indoor trainer, or perhaps your bike's just been gathering dust in the garage or shed forever. Well, now's the time to get it out of quarantine. So before you take your bike outside, here is an essential rundown of checks that you should do on it to make sure that it's safe to ride and in tip-top condition. First thing you should do is check your tires. Now for this, you're gonna need a pump. And if you only have space in your life for one pump, then a little one like this is great because you can take it with you when you go on your rides. But the downside is that a pump like this can take loads of effort to inflate your tires. So for at home, a much better thing is a big dedicated track pump. They don't cost the earth. It's important to inflate your tires to the correct pressure and if you're not sure what that is then it's usually written on the side of the tyre. Now the reason for this is that if they're not properly inflated you stand a greater risk of getting pinch punctures and we don't want that. You should also inspect the tyre tread. Run your fingers around them and see how worn they are. If they're really worn and there's lots of big cuts in them there's a greater risk of punctures and you may need to replace them. Wheels. Check your wheels are properly installed in the bike. If you have quick release skewers or through axles, check that these are tightened properly and then that the wheels can spin freely in the frame. If there's a slight wobble in the wheel as you spin it, then this can indicate that the wheel is slightly bent and needs truing. Don't worry, if you don't know how to do this yourself, a bike shop can do it for you and it's a relatively inexpensive job. Brakes. I mean, I don't need to explain why you need working brakes, do I? Well, you should check your brakes and when you depress them, if they feel spongy or the lever comes all the way back into the handlebar, they're probably too loose and need tightening. Now, depending upon the type of brakes you have, whether that's hydraulic brakes, uh, cable actuated brakes, rim or disc, we have videos that can show you how to adjust them if you need to. We'll put links in the description below. Check your chain is not seized or rusty and that it's properly lubricated. If it needs some oil, then apply some, but if it's really dirty and so is the rest of your bike, then the good thing to do is to use some degreaser and a brush and give it a good old clean. You should also check your bottom bracket. Turn it and check that it moves and it's not become seized and then also wiggle it from side to side to check there is no lateral movement or play in the bearings. You should check that all the bolts on your bike are correctly tightened and not loose and pay particular attention to the headset, the stem and the handlebars. If these are loose, your bike could be dangerous to ride. Now to make sure that they're the correct level of tightness, then we'd recommend using a torque wrench. It's the only tool for the job really. The specific torque that you need to tighten each specific component to is usually written in little writing on the side of it. You can check if your headset is loose by turning your handlebars, putting on the front brake and then rocking your bike forwards and backwards. If there is play in the headset, you should be able to see it. If you need to fix that, then don't worry, we've got a video, link in the description. You should check the seat post isn't loose too. If you've not ridden your bike for a while or you're getting it ready for someone else, they may have grown or shrunk so you may need to adjust the saddle height. Just make sure you don't extend the seat post beyond its maximum limit. Finally, you'll want to check your gears. Run through them and go all the way through the cassette and check that they're changing smoothly without skipping or jumping. And also you want to make sure that when you move the rear derailleur all the way across into your biggest cog at the back, your easiest gear, that it doesn't move the rear derailleur into the path of the spokes on the rear wheel, as this can cause a crash and break your bike. Now, if you're gonna check your gears, then we've got a video, you guessed it, we'll put it in a link in the description below that can show you how to do that if you need to do it. And you want to use a bike stand ideally, but if you don't have a bike stand like mine, then you can turn your bike upside down on a nice soft surface that's not going to damage it and do it that way. Or you can use your body as a bike stand like this. Right, that's the main things. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then please give us a like, a follow, all that jazz. 
you know the drill, and enjoy your ride. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Knackered. God, why is it taking so long? Oh, for God's sake. God. Come on, quicker. If you use a little mini pump, it takes so much longer than using a track pump. <sighs> Got there in the end.